Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time I have the ZTE Blade V50 Smart. Let's start with its review. This device is part of the entry level range. So it's for those who are looking for something very basic. And next we are going to see what it can offer us. But first let me tell you its price and where you can buy it in Mexico. It costs 2,499 pesos. On the screen you can see the reference price in dollars so that you have an idea if you are not from Mexico. Although remember that the prices here are not the same as there. Its official distributors are Telcel, Electra and Samborns. You know that ZTE has a very strong alliance with the most popular phone company in Mexico. And that is why sometimes the prices are not so attractive. Although in this case we are talking about one of the cheapest devices in the catalog. So... It's time for you to join me to know everything it can offer us to see how it compares to its competitors. In this device we will not find too many surprises and the design will not be an exception. The front is well used. Compare it for example with the use of the front that have several galaxy of higher prices. And I think here we will find considerably thin bezels with the incorporation also of that drop notch. We don't have any special glass to protect this device, but in the price range, it's not something we would expect. It has a thickness of 8.4 millimeters and a weight of 190 grams, so I think it is indeed a considerably light device. On the right side, it has the on-off button, which at the same time is a fingerprint reader in addition to the volume buttons. On the top frame, it has nothing. While on the left frame, we are going to find the slot to place a micro SD card and also the nano SIM card. In some regions, the slot for a second nano SIM card will also be available, but in Mexico it is blocked. On the bottom, we have the speaker, also a microphone and the USB-C port, as well as the headphone jack. Both the side frames and the back cover are made of plastic. In this case, I have the black edition, but it is also available in blue and green. This back cover has a small texture that I do not know if you can distinguish through the video but it consists of vertical lines and unlike the rest of the body of this device, the camera module does have a reflective finish. I think the design is nice, it's not bad for the price range and obviously it doesn't have any special resistance certification against water, dust or anything like that. The display will also be simple according to its price. It is 6.6 .6 inches in size with a 20 to 9 ratio. The resolution is low, HD plus to be exact, 720 by 1600 pixels. So we definitely don't have a highly detailed image and it doesn't offer us good viewing angles either, since as you can see, if we turn the device slightly, it loses a lot of brightness, giving us an obviously plain experience. Its pixel density also does not get to be very high. Therefore, small texts are likely to get to reveal some pixels and the technology is IPS, then, in addition to not having viewing angles so outstanding, you will also notice that the colors are not so saturated, nor does it offer us a very high contrast, and therefore we can conclude that it is a fairly simple screen. The truth is that, if at this price you are looking for a much more attractive screen, I think you should go look for used devices or from past years. Because in this year, definitely a newly introduced device at this price is not going to offer us a much better screen than the one this device has. The good thing is that it is a screen with a good level of brightness as long as you view the content from the front. This maximum brightness level can help you have a better viewing experience from the side, but it is definitely noticeable that the viewing angles are not an attractive point. But something that can be attractive is the refresh rate that is 90Hz which is higher than that offered by the iPhone 15, for example. So the movements do look quite fluid when browsing the system and scrolling through lists or social networks, giving a feeling of a modern device. If you do not want to consume so much battery, you could also set the refresh rate at 60 Hz or better yet, put it on automatic so that the device is responsible for adjusting this. It also has tools that we usually find in every device, such as a dark mode or a night mode, as well as a reading mode that you can set for some specific applications. And we will also have a screen color temperature calibrator in case you want a little warmer tones or cooler tones. Although honestly, none of the calibrations seem very attractive to me. But it is definitely a screen that for this price range we could come to accept. Although perhaps there are other devices that already begin to offer full HD screens from this basic price. It only has one speaker, so it gives us a mono sound experience is what we could expect in this price range. 
And it sounds loud enough and the audio quality is what one would expect from a device in this range, without a strong bass frequency presence and with the mid frequencies a bit higher than ideal. There are definitely other devices in this price range that will offer a more powerful sound and even a few competitors that will also offer stereo sound. So, it's also not a point that we would highlight. Let's listen to a small test. Although remember that it is not the same as listening to it live. Among the positive points is the incorporation of the headphone jack. Although honestly in this price range is something very common to see. So you can use wired headphones and in case you want to use wireless headphones, I have bad news because it only supports the SPC codec, i.e. the lowest resolution audio. So it does not have support for any audio codec a little bit more advanced. We could practically say that in this device it will be mandatory to use wired headphones if you want good resolution audio. In addition, the device only has one microphone, so the recording quality will be basic, and if you cover it up, you will be completely unlistenable. But let's listen to a test. Esta es una grabación utilizando este dispositivo ZTE V50 Smart. Un dispositivo sencillo. Voy a tapar el micrófono. Escuchas muy bien. The front camera is 5 megapixels, nothing else, with aperture f, and of course fixed focus. So it's a simple resolution camera. Apparently it doesn't have any fast aperture mechanism. And as you'll notice, the capture speed isn't very fast either. In fact, it doesn't have any animation to show us that it has already captured and you will only notice it when the preview is updated in the gallery. So the experience is really very simple. It does offer us a beauty mode here that has different parameters such as skin smoothing, skin terza, face illumination, tonality, enlarge the eyes, reduce the chin, and also change the color of the lips. It also offers various filters that we cannot preview in real time. And the good news is that it does have a smile detector that we can enable or disable, and also the recognition of gestures with the palm of the hand to capture a photo much more easily when the shutter is difficult to reach. Outdoor selfies are going to have enough quality so that you can share them on your social networks with your friends and that they are of good quality, but they do not go beyond that. Indoors, they lose a bit of color accuracy, although they still maintain a good level of detail. And at night, if you have some light source nearby, I think the result is positive. Although if you're in some sort of nighttime backlighting, it can suffer a bit more, but I was actually surprised that my face didn't come out completely dark. And this is thanks to the fact that the screen gets to illuminate a bit, although it doesn't work as a flash simulation. Backlit, the preview still doesn't look well optimized. But after taking the picture, it somehow does try to balance the highlights and shadows to get a better result. And it does succeed. Obviously not at the level of a high-end device, but for this price, we can accept this result. This camera will also allow us to take portrait pictures, although it is not able to detect objects, but I find that the bokeh effect generated in the background is very nice. So if you want to have good results, just don't go out near an object, please. In fact, at night you can also make good portraits, although I insist that at night it loses much more definition and color accuracy. On the back we have two cameras available. The main one, which is 24mm, 50 megapixels and f1.8 aperture with autofocus. The truth is that these specifications look considerably good for a device of this price. However, the second camera is much simpler, only for capturing depth of 2 megapixels with f2.4 aperture and fixed focus. It will only help for capturing portrait shots, which we'll get to in a moment. As usual, we will try to capture number 1 to test the capture speed. That's where I tried it, and it really did do it, although it came out with too much movement. This is my second attempt, honestly it is very fast to capture, although it comes out with a lot of movement. And if we hold down the shutter, we also have a burst of up to 30 pictures. So we can somehow capture the precise moment. And I think this is one of its strong points, because there are even more expensive devices that don't even have a burst or have a very bad burst, but this device has a very good burst. In fact, it also has an expert mode for taking pictures with manual parameters, although it does not allow capturing pictures in RAW. 
but it does allow us to access advanced settings such as shutter speed, which can go up to a fifth of a second, which is not surprising, honestly. And the ISO can also be raised up to 10,000. This is more advanced than most smartphones that usually go up to 6,400. You can also vary the white balance and some other settings like contrast or saturation. The device does not have any special mode for scanning documents, so you will have to download a special application for this action. But it does have a special option for scanning QR codes, which works considerably well. Capturing moving pictures is not positive with this device. It can give you a ghost image as a result. And since its 50 megapixel sensors do have a special mode to capture higher resolution. And surprisingly it does get to make good use of the information from this sensor. Although as of now you are realizing that the colors are not as accurate. But specifically talking about the 50 megapixels they do get to take advantage of it. In automatic mode the pictures will be 12 megapixels. And let me insist a little more about the poor color accuracy. For here the picture comes out a bit pale with two cold shades which definitely do not correspond to reality. And you even notice that on some edges of the lens we see distortions. So for basic photography it's fine. But if you want to get much more demanding, you will even notice some mesh-like imperfections in the solid color areas. So, the result is really not good. Although indoors, when we don't have so much illumination, I think the lens doesn't suffer so much to get the light in. And so, we have a very good result with respect to the level of detail. Although again, the accuracy of the colors is in doubt. But it is appreciated that it does not have so much presence of noise, even in these photographs that are with much more darkness. At night, without night mode, we have a simple result. Although obviously if you find a good light source nearby, you'll have something a little more redeemable. But if you enable night mode, you can also improve the amount of detail that we have in the photograph and also intensify the colors. In backlit photography, the preview does not look optimized. But fortunately it does have automatic HDR. So after taking the picture, you do have a balanced result of lights and shadows. It's actually very good for this price. So you don't have to be too afraid if before you take the picture it looks like that because it is processed well afterwards. The 50 megapixel sensor unfortunately is not well used for zooming. At 5x digital I think that's the maximum where we could still consider it to be good quality. But it lets us go all the way up to 10x where it feels a little bit artificial zoom. So it's not that remarkable. The camera has autofocus so you can perfectly well focus on small objects and the result seems to me to be of good quality. In fact, if you want to, you can take a 50 megapixel picture and you can zoom in afterwards to notice a little bit more of the details. So, I don't think that the fact of not integrating a macro camera is a weakness because the main camera can take very good pictures of this style. The bad thing is that the additional camera that is integrated is supposed to capture the depth. And in this picture, you realize that it does not capture that information very well because the foreground at times is out of focus and in some other moments it comes out in focus. So the result is very inaccurate despite generating a nice bokeh effect in the background. The detection is very bad and so is the result. Although in less difficult environments where there is only a person without objects, we can have a little better result like this one I achieved at night. So, everything will depend on the complexity of the photograph. This device only allows video recording in full HD at 30 frames per second, both in the main camera and in the front camera. Although it is curious that it also allows us to record in lower resolutions in case we do not want to use too much internal storage space. It also has other tools that are uncommon in mobile devices for video recording. For example, we can set the white balance manually despite not having a more advanced pro mode. We also have the anti-bandwidth to select whether it is in 50 or 60 Hz. Interestingly, it also brings stabilizer, but it comes turned off by default. And you can also tell it whether or not you want it to detect faces to optimize the lighting. And this is a switch that I really appreciate a lot in low-end devices. You could also select to record without any audio picked up by the microphone. Although that option is rare, but it is appreciated that it is present. When recording a video, we have a slider for the zoom that seems to go very well. We can also take a picture or screenshot of this video, we can also pause and resume the recording, but what we can't do is turn on the flashlight if we already started our recording, let alone rotate to the front camera. To do both actions we must first stop this video recording, so it loses a bit of versatility. Video recording is very basic, but it is what we would expect from a device of this price. So although it offers full HD resolution, the truth is that it is not very remarkable. 
The focus struggles a lot. The colors are very inaccurate, but I insist that it is what one would expect from a device of this price. The focus on very aggressive changes might be good, but on much more subtle changes it definitely struggles. It's too noticeable when it comes to refocusing. And even when you're shooting indoors it goes to 18 frames per second to try to recover more light. But the movement looks very shaky. The good thing is that it does have good colors but definitely for a video one would expect at least 30 frames per second. At night it goes as low as 15 frames per second. Obviously in order to pick up more light, but the movement feels too clumsy. So it is not at all advisable to record using this device. Also, again, you will notice that the focus struggles a lot more when there is not so much light present. In backlit scenarios, if you have face detection enabled, it will give preference to backlighting, sacrificing the brightest areas of the background, although you can disable it. And as I had already anticipated, the stabilization is turned off by default, so if you do not enter the settings, you will have a very bad result even when you're walking, and obviously when you're running it will be much more disastrous. But if you enable the stabilization, even though it improves in this sense, you notice that it again reduces its frame rate to 18 frames per second, so the result looks really very bad, even with the stabilization enabled. Interestingly, I feel that the zoom behaves well, Although when zooming in and out there is a jelly-like effect, but even at maximum zoom there is a good level of detail much better than many other more expensive devices. This device does not have slow motion, but it does have a fast camera that you can adjust from 4x for movements of people. But you can raise it up to 1800x, although the fast camera does not have stabilization, so if you need a tripod or a special stabilizer, but it is appreciated that the fast camera, if it is in full HD, then record landscapes with the device completely stopped could become something positive. Finally, the front camera also has a very simple lens. Although it is appreciated that if you have the ability to record video in full HD as there are other devices that at this price the front camera only adjust it in HD. Again, stabilization is turned off by default, although curiously in this case if you enable stabilization 30 frames per second are maintained, then you could get to record even better quality with the front camera on this device. Although obviously the color is very simple and neither has a good balance of lights and shadows in backlit conditions. Indoors it drops to 25 frames per second to try to capture colors better, although this is on average because you immediately notice how it goes back up when you're in a more brightly lit area. And at night it drops down to 10 frames per second and obviously this is not a quality one would expect from a device so the result is honestly very bad. Obviously being a budget device it does not integrate slow motion or fast motion on the front camera or a dual recording mode. This device comes with Android 13 running in its veins and on it comes with the MyOS customization layer also in its 13 edition. The bad thing is that it doesn't have any update policy so we can't be sure that it will receive several updates and that causes that the lifetime of this device can become very short compared to some other alternatives. Although in this price range most devices do not have any clear update policy. The manufacturer actually adds very few things as part of the software to differentiate itself then we will find the gestures and movement section although it can also become common in other devices. To activate the device with some actions like double tap on screen even if it is off, you could also get to double tap on some empty area to turn off the screen, slide three fingers down to take a screenshot, lift the device to turn on the screen, if you are being called you can immediately bring it close to your ear to answer, and some other things that could be a bit more useful like shaking the device on the lock screen to turn on the flashlight. You can also tell it if you want to use this button to call the Google Assistant, but other than that, the truth is that there are not many options, so it is a stable system, although also extremely simple, but that at the same time makes it functional. The bad thing about all this software is that it will have a very short lifespan due to the lack of updates. It has a side fingerprint reader that allows five different registrations and works considerably well. Generally, these side fingerprint readers are always very fast and this is no exception. Simply place and remove your finger and the unlocking will be done quickly. In addition, you can select whether you want to press the button or just place your fingerprint on it. It also has a quick launch option where you can map any of the registered fingerprints so that immediately when you unlock the device it also opens some of your favorite applications. The device also has facial recognition, but of course it is a very basic facial recognition, so people similar to you could get to unlock it 
and is part of what the device itself explains to you at the time of creating the record. So if your facial recognition... On the other hand, if you want a more comfortable experience, you could also enable Google Smart Lock to set some safe environments, such as places or devices, so that while it is in those conditions it is not locking and that makes the experience can become faster. This device includes a password manager or Google Autofill that does not verify your fingerprint first before filling in the fields, so it is somehow a vulnerability. Although as always in the Google settings, you could enable the option to verify your fingerprint first, but it is very curious that these options are disabled. It would be best to enable this option so that you have a safe and comfortable experience at the same time to automatically fill in your passwords. It also has an application called My Vault, where we can store various things all protected by our fingerprint as applications images, videos, files or even passwords with simple text, although these passwords are not automatically inserted into the fields. It has no child mode or some other things a little more advanced and if you get to lose the device you are completely dependent on Google's own implementation so honestly there is little chance that you can get to find this device using only this tool. The battery is 5000 milliamps, and honestly it performed about as well as one would expect on a device with this battery capacity, although its app management running in the second half of its life is a bit of a challenge. Although its management of applications running in the background can be a bit aggressive. The advantage is that you can manually set which applications you want to continue running and which applications you want to close. Also with respect to battery saving, we will have a standard mode and a much more aggressive ultra mode. Although to enter this mode curiously you must first enable a permission and that is very curious being a function of the system. In this mode you can have 4 applications that you also consider essential and everything else will be restricted. Obviously it is a mode for emergencies. On the other hand, it charges 22.5 watts in power so we could consider fast charging however it is not the most advanced. Although for the price range we could not get so demanding either. In 15 minutes we recovered 17% of the energy in 30 minutes 33% and the full charge was completed in 1 hour and 41 minutes. Definitely in the middle of 2023 this is already for many a slow charge, plus it does not have some special options to protect or care for the battery during its charging period, unlike other devices that bring battery care intelligent charging charge lock or similar things. Connectivity as virtually everything that is in this device will be basic only offers access to 4G networks, does not offer some advanced data blocking mode as we find in other devices and comes with Wi-Fi 5, then does not allow us to access exaggeratedly high download speeds or Wi-Fi or mobile data, so it is recommended for basic use. Fortunately it does have Bluetooth 5.2 to have good stability, but I already told you that it does not have very advanced codecs for audio, nor does it have NFC unlike some other devices that from the entry range begin to incorporate it. But fortunately if it has the ability to project the screen wirelessly not only to Chromecast but also some other monitors. We will also find Android Auto to connect it to the screen of your vehicle and in the sensors if we will notice several absences therefore it is a device that cuts in many aspects and that is why I think it is much more advisable the Axon 50 Lite in case you want to buy a ZT device or also see some other alternatives. The good thing about the sensors is that if it has a physical proximity sensor and finally the vibration motor is on the Z axis and is very weak so it gives us a very simple optical experience. The ecosystem and brand experience. The truth is that it is very simple because ZT only has mobile devices such as smartphones but does not complement with some headphones watches or more advanced things. Then we could say that it is totally dependent on Google and its technologies such as Nearby Share or Google Fast Pay, with which you could get to have a certain experience of Android ecosystem, but ZT itself, there is absolutely nothing. Also depends on Google, regarding cloud storage through Google Drive or Google Photos and control of home devices through Google Home. In fact, the Quick Settings panel also offers direct access to the Google Home controls. So obviously the experience with everything to do with Google will be good but it is too dependent on Google and does not show a brand strength of its own. Let's do a test of opening applications quickly. And while I tell you that this device comes with the processor and Unisoc T.606 a processor, that is obviously simple. However, I think that in this price range if we were placed, a MediaTek processor would be even simpler. 
then it is something positive to see a processor and Unisoc, despite being a brand not so well known and not so well positioned, a company at 4 gigabytes of physical RAM plus 4 virtual gigabytes. It took 4.75 seconds on average to open each of these applications, and honestly, that's not so bad, considering the price range it has. Although the RAM memory, if it is going to be very short, if you want to keep many applications open, so you are likely to see several restarts ideally open a maximum of about 7 applications at the same time to keep a little more fluid execution notes. How this way we have applications still running, although I insist that the processor will be simple, so surely in some cases you will have a slightly less smooth experience. Some cases you will have an experience a little less fluid than we would like. Especially when scrolling in this type of applications where we will see that it is not going to 100% fluid. But for this price, the truth does not seem to me a bad performance, although let me continue to insist that if you are looking for a device of use or past years, it is very likely that you will find something much more powerful. It offers us 128GB of storage, which is not bad, but consider that for a little more money you could access the ZTE Axon 50 Lite, which has 256GB then I do not see much sense to acquire this device. The good thing is that it does support a micro SD up to a terabyte, but his brother also lets do as always the test of exporting several clips together with total duration of one minute all recorded with this device in full HD. And let's see how long it can take to do this task. And already finished in about 53 seconds considering that it is full HD. The truth is a very modest device in this case, but it could help you to edit some videos, only you could not do it with much speed. This device does not have any game manager or special tools focused on these contents. So let's go directly to review how it did in the tests. In Call of Duty by default selects the low graphic quality at a medium frame rate. However for the test we were able to raise it to a medium graphic quality and even a high frame rate. Which is remarkable because it is a cheap device. Although it obviously does not support as many simultaneous effects as more expensive devices. Unfortunately, we could not perform a specific monitoring of the frames per second of this device, but we can tell you that the experience is extremely good. If you are not recording the screen, when recording the screen, the result will look much less fluid than it was in reality. But we can say that it was approximately around 40 frames per second, which is considerably good for a device of this price. In addition, also taking into account that it did not heat up significantly, so it is undoubtedly a device that does get attention. In the case of Legends, it is always on an automatic setting. But for the test, we set it to low quality at 60 frames per second to see what it was capable of. And again, the screen recording may not look as smooth as the game was in reality, where we could say to pure calculation that could have reached between 50 or 60 frames per second. And that experience, honestly, that is very good even in a low quality graphics because it was obviously recommended in a device of this price. But I think you can get to have good games simply by setting a graphic quality according to its price. In the Spongebob game by default, it is set to average 30 frames per second for the test. We also set it to the same resolution, but we went up to 60 frames per second to see what it was capable of. And again, it is striking that it is able to maintain a smooth experience. Obviously, in this case, the only thing we had open was the game. And this shows us that the processor, if it has a good enough power, possibly when recording the screen, does not notice a result so advanced. But I think the result does become good in real life. In fact, it should be noted that in this particular game does not drop much performance while you're recording the screen. And finally, in Asphalt 9, we realize that it does not support 60 frames per second. But having seen the good performance it had had before we selected the best quality setting and again we had a very good experience, the truth is that it does highlight that the Unisoc processors have improved in a major way coming to run smoothly games, although obviously with simple graphics, because in this case, despite having selected better quality graphics, the game automatically chooses modest graphics appropriate to the price range of this equipment. So I think if you play with these settings, you will have a good experience at no time. The game was frozen. And anyway, you yourself are seeing that even recording the screen gives us a good experience. Performance and for the moment that has been all regarding this device. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you know, you can tell us and we'll see you next time.